Agut, Vochra Boisai. Ah! Live from Oxnard. Oxnard. Los. No. Is Los Angeles? California. Oxnard, the California. Shalom of Rocha Raboisai. Um, it doesn't seem like I'm going to make it to Los Angeles. I'm just going to stay here in Oxnard. Then on Sunday, Bez Hashem, go down to Chicago. Yesterday, I read two beautiful things. They weren't even emails. They were both text messages. Um, one was sent directly to Mo Landy, and he sent it to me. And uh, the kids are, what happened was I was reading them in the Hebrew shir and I had a complete meltdown. One of the worst meltdown, like, it just hit me. I'm, I'm hoping Be'ez HaShem to keep it together. I'm going to read it. You, you're probably not going to understand why I had a meltdown. But I did. It just touched me in a very soft spot. It was, um, uh, by the way, we're having a lot of, uh, internet technical issues. So, Mela, hopefully everything goes well. I see that Mark is trying to get on the computer, off the computer, gets, keeps getting thrown off. Bezer Shem, that's going to be a problem. So, I'm going to read these emails and Bezer Shem hope it, it, the entire shir, I was so emotional the entire shir that all of a sudden I would burst out crying, go weiter. At the end of the shir, I think it's a combination of, first of all, the emotion of this very, very strong um, email for me. And the fact that we're finishing Cheska Sabatim. Today is the final, final day of Cheska Sabatim. And that itself was very emotional. Why? <laughs> I'm getting emotional thinking about it. Because I think a lot of people had this trauma from Cheska Sabatim. What are we going to do with Cheska Sabatim? It's, it's so difficult when Mishiva was hard. And, and it, it was Mamesh Gishmak. The whole Baba Basra, 60 daf into Baba Basra, and it's just easy, it's flowing, it's gishma. And I think we were able to remove a lot of the trauma that some of the people had. And I'm going to miss Poshet, I'm going to miss Cheskes The smaller dapim, the easier dapim, mamish gishma. That being said, let me just read these emails and hope to keep it together. Let's try it one more time. I didn't even read it and I'm already tearing up. Here's the emotional one. To my brother in the daf, you were caught in the middle of doing something crazy on your flight to the Holy Land a few years ago. And since then, that's cooked up a storm in the oil matayra for the Pasha to Erlich Yidin. The Siyad Shmaya landed in Rabbi Eli's email, and since he read it out for the world to hear, see, it started to become like a challenge amongst us MDY buddies. How much can we learn on a trip? Is it five daf, ten daf, or is it the length of time we can do the stretch of learning two straight hours or three, even four or five without any personal distractions like WhatsApps, etc.? Well, I thought it'd be easy with no disturbances, but the Baal Dovar works not only on the world, but even at an altitude of 38,000 feet. And it keeps up with the speed of our plane at 660 miles per hour. The guy next to me was watching the whole flight six hours straight. And what's worse is the woman in the row in front of me was watching a despicable non chasidish movie. Wow, was that a battle. But the whole time, I thought to myself, if Mo did it, so could I. I'm thanking you from the bottom of my mind. Shama. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Three times thank you for encouraging me to do chazara. On 11 daf of Cheska Sabatim on my transatlantic flight. Oh, so I held it together, Kemat. 11 daf of Cheska Sabatim on my transatlantic Atlantic flight. I wish I knew who this person was. I'm sure I'll find out eventually. Givaldic. Okay. Whew. Did it, Givaldic. And, and I explained the reason why I was emotional, I think, is because I know, like so many, all of us, we all struggle with the same things. We're all human beings. We all struggle. 
And we want to watch a Geschmack, a movie. And the, 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 we want the time to fly by. And we have the things with the Yetzer and the Taivas and the this and the that. And to turn something that's so easy, so easy, yeah, we do another this, two movies and to do 11 Dafa Gemara, Chazara, Chazara, Cheska Sabatim. Cheska Sabatim. 11 Daf. Ah. Oh, so what's the Pella? The Pella is like this. That a guy, and I said this 10 times, and I want to say it again. Molandi, he did it not to get covered, not to impress anybody. He did it as a challenge for himself. And he had no idea that somebody took a picture of him and sent it to me. I spoke about it. But the schusen that he has, without even knowing, without even trying, just because he was doing the right thing at, at the right time. And somebody else was encouraged. And since then, many people encouraged other people. You encourage other people by setting an example, by learning in a chasr, by learning on a bus, by eating in the right way, showing your mishpacha, showing your children. You don't even understand the, the, the implications that it has and the, the far fetch that this Yid he did on his way to Eretz Yisrael, it changed this Chassid's life. He didn't watch a despicable non Hasidish movie because you learned three years ago on a different flight. Unbelievable. Boisai, here's a non... Uh, this is more of a Hasidish story also. Rebelli, this is a real Moifes from MDY nine months later. My name is Yankee Gross. G-R-O-S-Z from Cote St. Luke, Montreal, Canada. In my pizza store was the first MDY pre-charity meeting. He was Mazaka the Oilam and gave pizza and everything to the Oilam to get together for the charity event. We were waiting for eight years to have more children. For Hashem, we have twin boys. And the MDY Shabbaton was in the middle of our fertility, fertility treatment until the last minute we didn't know if we'll be able to make it. Baruch Hashem, we came for Shabbos and we got a good bracha from you. Nine months later, this is the results. Please see attached. And here, as you can see, the... Hmm. But then not work. Oh, now it should be working. A little bit of a lag, boy say. I don't see it on my screen. Oh, here it is. So the Siata Deshmaya, he had a baby boy. Mark told me, I forgot the guy's name. Shulam? Was it Shulam Bergwartz? Somebody who didn't have children Goldstein. for a very long time. Who? Goldstein. Goldstein. Shulam What's Goldstein. His first name? Shulam Goldstein. Shulam Goldstein. I got one name right. Shulam Goldstein, how long was he waiting for a child? I think okay, nine so, years. Nine years. Nine years. Came to so the kids are. It's not Eli. It's the Shabbaton. They come to the Shabbaton. <laughs> oh, they got a, they got brachas too from you. So it's uh, uh, yeah 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 right. It's it's two two down. One more to go, and then uh, you get Rebbe status. I if people uh, Boy Noel is going to be sending couples like crazy. It's going to be hard to get in because nine months later. Two, two couples who were waiting for children, eight years and nine years, had children from the Shabbaton. Ah, the Gishmak, the, 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 the Soirus of the Shabbaton. Right. Okay. And then, talking about children, this is one of the most incredible things. Listen to this. Mazel Tov, let me show the picture. Mazel Tov, David Gold from North Miami Beach, Florida, joined MDY four plus years ago during Mesech the Shabbos. I'm trying to show it. It's just not going, Mark. There's a big lag on my end. Two daughters, listen to this, two daughters gave birth to his first grandsons. I'm, I, I'm assuming it also means granddaughters. Maybe even not, but it is, this person had two grandsons from two daughters on the same day, means two brisim tomorrow, two pidyan habonim, which on a daf that talks about bris and pidyan haben, Unbelievable it's a kiss from Hashem. I just hopped. Mazel Tov times two. Here, two daughters. 
gave birth to their first, first child ever on the same, same day. And they're both males, two boys. So my male is going to be two brisim on the same day, two pina beds on the same day. Hopefully for the grandfather, they do it in the same place. I see Mark is jumping in on and off my computer. Unbelievable. Okay, a lot of fun today. The boy side today is Daf Non Tes. Omar Rav Yehuda Omar Shmuel. I believe that's where we're starting from today, right? Yeah. No. Sorry. Today's Daf Samach. That's why. Givaldik. Um Lokach Daf Samach. Two lines down. Lokach Bayis Bechotzer Acheres Loiv Techenel Chatzar Ashutfim. Says in the Mishnah. If you purchase, that's why. I was like, what am I supposed to, what do I need to put here? Oh, it is here. Oh, so first of all, I have to do uh, the sponsors. The coil is sponsored, the coil of the month, by Binyam Rosenfeld, for Atzloch in business. The Nesech is sponsored for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. Wow, it's late. Paras Achoydesh, you did your prayer, please daven for Pinyan Shvuyim. You understand? No, I heard that he came out. So we will still daven for him. For Yonason Osher Yehuda Michal, I heard he was released on bail or something. Paras Achoydesh, Binyam Rosenfeld, with graduate the Reb Biederman, Reb Eli, Gedali Fenster, and Michael Savdi for their different podcasts and daily bitachon.com, etc. Paras Shavua. Official mitzvah motivators, the schus for full shame, Yaakov Shlomo ben Rochaleya, pressman father of MD Wire, Elchon, a pressman Zaydi of MD Wire, Yechiel, Elchon, and Hefter. Parnas Ayoyim, Abba Renner, the covered Rib Eli Shlito, my favorite, <laughs> Abba Renner. Happy anniversary. You hear? Rebbitson, somebody sent us a happy anniversary. Thank you for being a Rebbe in consistency. Art of the month, not you, me. <laughs> for schus for belly. And the whole MDY staff will continue to make Torah so enjoyable for so many boys. Here we go. So yesterday we were learning about this Chotzer, as you can see right over here. Let's say Ruvain bought uh, one of the apartments. Let's say the apartment to the right, the door on the right, all the way in the front. And then he decided to go behind the gray wall and buy another apartment also on the right. He cannot do this. He cannot take off the door or open up a doorway between slide seven. Mark, you're controlling that slide? Oh. Cannot open up a, a pathway. Why? Because it's going to increase traffic into the first chatzar, into the second chatzar. You don't want people from different chatzeros walking in. Just because you own apartments in both Courtyards doesn't mean that you're able to open up a pathway. Shin Adam, I'm sorry. Lokach Bayis Bechotzer, two lines down. Lokach Bayis Bechotzer, Dav Samach Medalf. Lokach Bayis Bechotzer, Acheres Leif Techen Al Chatzer Ashut Vimay Taim Bnei Shemar Baalim Is Haderech. The explanation doesn't mean that he's making the the the, uh, the distance longer. It means that there's going to be more people in the courtyard. Eimos Seifa. So we have to understand how this fits in with the. End part. Elon wrote a bonus ahead of the So if he wants, he could build a room inside his house. Uboina Aliyah al Gabi Beisoy, and he could build an attic on top of his house. As the Gemara of Aloy, Marba, all of his Haderech, he's going to increase people. Once you build units, apartments, you can increase. You're going to increase the amount of traffic going in and out of the Chatzar. Omravuna, my Chedesh, Chalokai, Bishnaim, Umay Aliyah. So, so says the Gemara when you do it as so. Slide eight. This is what the house looked like beforehand. And this is what he's doing. He adds, he takes one story and he adds, uh, okay, you didn't go back, but say that. I'll go back to seven and then go back to eight real quick. Oh. No, 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 seven. I'm sorry, eight to nine. Yeah, see, so added he just all he did, he didn't increase any f- square footage of the house. All he did is increased another floor. He he, he uh, reduced the size of the height of the the floor instead of having 
12 foot ceilings now he has two floors with six foot ceilings if the actual floor is uh, half an inch thick so the kids read an ad so there's a machloik is here between the Ramah and the Shulchan Aruch by not adding square footage the Ramah says he holds like the Rishbam that the whole Isser of that we have over here is to add square footage. If you're not adding square footage to your house, you're not expanding outwards, you're just expanding within your house, you're adding a floor. Here, even this house I'm in here, right here, there's a, there's a two-story, maybe I'll show, why not? For the, so the oil can understand. Here, there's a two-story, very high ceiling here. So if, let's say I put a, right by the, the brown wood, I build a, a floor, I can make this, I can make another, I can add bedrooms here, but I didn't add square footage to the actual house. So, here, I'll just show the Why not? Once I'm here, here, there's some uh, water here. And, uh, high ceilings give out. Okay, Oxnard, that's what Oxnard, so it's, uh, there's water here. So, according to the Rishbam and the Ramal, that's not a, it, it's also to, to add, but you're, you're allowed to rent. You, if, you, if you have another floor inside there, like we, we showed on, on uh, chart nine, then I can rent the, that extra little level all the way in the, the top next to the attic. But according to Shulchan Aruch, it's also for me to rent out that part. The only thing that's mutter is to invite more guests. That's what we had. That was the, the situation in Bnei Brak, the situation all over Eretz Yisrael now. People... That live on the top floor like I do, they who owns the the, the, the roof? The, the guy that owns the top floor owns the roof. The rest of the building they have rights to put solar systems and stuff like that. But in terms of building rights, the guy that owns the top floor usually so they add another another few uh, rooms and whatever. So to rent it out to other people will be very prob- problematic halachically, unless you get permission from everybody. Because you're increasing traffic in the elevator, increasing traffic in the hallway, increasing trash, increasing everything. It's, it's, people don't want more people in their building. If you're adding for yourself, so that's something else. And then all you're doing, then you have machlaikas between the, uh, the, the Ramah and the Shulchan Aruch. Okay. Zokt the Mishnah. Lo yiftach odom l'chatzar ashut vim kenegah pesach a person cannot open up a doorway facing his neighbor's door like we have right over here Gishmat. My, my, my neighbor here I have a neighbor that's staring at me let's see if we can see here this guy sitting on his uh, on his patio he's facing me maybe he even hears me so these chaloinois against my chaloinois is problematic if this if we did not do this to begin with Okay, this is how it was built, so it's Peseder. I cannot open up a window, and actually this window's here. And the, the, the neighbor on this side doesn't have any windows facing this house. I guess it was designed like that on purpose. If I have a courtyard with partners, I cannot open up a window that faces another window. The famous, which the Gemara is going to bring. If you have a small window, you should not make it large. If you have one window, you cannot make it two. Maybe you should close the door. So I don't know if the, all the neighbors hear what's going on. You want to close the door? If you're in the Shusarabim, and you want to open up a door, you want to open up a window. So there's so many people in Rishul Sarabim anyways, you're not going to harm anybody. If it was a small window, you make it larger. And if it's one, you can make it two. Says How do I know that you're not allowed to put a window against the, facing another window? Bilam saw that the Shvatah is facing the Shvatah. Bilam saw, what did he see? What did he notice in Klai Yisrael that was so special? Says the Gemara, he saw that their uh, tents, their opening to the tents, are not facing one another. And he said, he announced, this 
nation is roi to have the shechina. So Mark, we're going to go to the next thing. We'll show this video. No! I just have what happened. I didn't have before. Because he sat down, so the earth moved. Oh, maybe we should see it again. Let's see if that's the shot. It, it, it took me three times to hop. Okay, not that's. <laughs> This pest was coming. Oh, there's a little bit of a tilt. No. Okay. That's what happens when you put your tent in front of another person's tent. If you had a small window opening, do not make it large. So, I'm going to skip that thing for a second. Let's go to chart number 12. If you have a doorway that's four amas, so you're entitled to four amas in your chater. And you see it in the red dotted line. You get four amas in the red dotted line. So Rabbi Muhammad thought that it means if you have a doorway, one, one opening that's four, don't make it eight. Why? Because then you're stealing from the chater. You're taking another four amas. From the chatzer. Because But if oh Mark, sorry, I'm supposed to go to the next slide, slide thirteen. Hmm. Oh, see, I see. It just went from four to eight. Two openings. But slide fourteen. Let's say. It was two amas wide, the doorway. You're still entitled to four amas. So if you double it to four, oh, uh, then you didn't take anything from anyone. You went from four and you stayed at four. What's the problem? Maybe that should be mutter. Even though you had a smaller door, now it's a larger. You didn't do anything. You didn't take any additional ama away from the people in the chat. No, that's also no good. Why? When you had a two ama, let's go back for a second to chart 15. When you had a small little door, I was able to, to maneuver myself. I would go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. You couldn't see me. Since you have such a large opening, you have a, a four ama opening, then I can't hide from you. Next. Nusogyo. If you had one door, you can't make it two. So we're going to the Maymar, Bar Bal, Shavu Trey, Bene Tarte Tarte. Let's see if this is a thing. Not really. Okay. So, so in the beginning, Roman Bachomet thought that if you if you had a, a four ama wide door, do not make it two doors that are two amas. It's the same same width. It's four amas, but you, you're doubling the door. Why? Because now you're taking each doorway you receive four amas in a chatzar, right? For unloading, you get four amas to unload your stuff in the chatzar, like you see in charge 15. But if you have even a two ama door, you still get four amas in the chatzar. Oh, he's not around. Oops, sorry. Let me get out of here. Mark, yeah, sure. Givaldic. But if you have a, a two ama uh, thing, you also get four amas. And if you have two doors that are two amas wide, you get four amas for each one. So you get eight amas. The same kind of idea that we said before. But if your doorway was eight amas wide, 16 ama, 16 foot door, and you, you made two doors out of it, you made four four, you're only getting, you're not getting any additional ama in the chutz. So you're still getting your four ama plus four ama, you're still getting eight ama. It's also a problem. If there's one door, I would hide from you. Betray the But two, 
Doorways I can hide from you. So the Rishbam explains because if I have two doorways, I'll, I'll shut one and keep one open for ear, whatever. If you have one, you, you keep it shut. Like this, the guy doesn't know how to protect himself because one is open and one is closed. But if you're in Jus Rabin, you're permitted to open up a door facing another door. So if so, if I voice it, I'm in Jus Rabin. Why can't I open up a door across from your door? You have the people walking back and forth all day long in Jus Rabin. You have to be careful from them. So what do you care what I do? The Rishbam sticks here and he says that people in Jus Rabin, they, they, they go really high. They, they ride high animals, tall animals like camels, horses. So you have to be careful from that direction. Says the Elegim Mishnah. So, oops, I did that again. Like this. Let's go here. So, let's just show a bar. Uh, yeah, Givaldic. Next one is a round bar. Next. Shiach, next, Ma'ara, Gival. Now, we'll go back to chart 16. And we, we can play it. Also now to Snohomish County, where a gaping hole in State Route 529 in Everett is now repaired this morning after WashDOT had to shut down the busy highway for emergency maintenance. It turns out someone was digging and tunneling underneath the highway. No, and luckily crews have been able to reopen this road, but questions still remain. Fox 13's AJ Janneville digs into who might be responsible for their own unauthorized digging. But instead of a left at Albuquerque, whoever dug this tunnel went right into Highway 529. When we first assess and see a hole in the road, it's definitely not our thought that someone tunneled underneath it. But that's exactly what happened. Assistant Communication Manager James Poling with Washington's Department of Transportation tells me, first crews found this foot-long hole, already a safety concern for drivers. Then they realized the problem went much deeper. The fix to 529 took about seven hours, slowing down traffic for a good part of the day and the cost to taxpayers to repair the road is most likely in the thousands. The kids are Hamas made it to America, the digging tunnels underneath highways. You're not permitted to dig under a highway. Boyrois, Shikhin Umaris, any type, any size, any shape. Rebbe Lezer Matrik, Deshtia Golem, Alex Dunavon. Rebbe says it's okay to do char 20. Yeah, we got to click. And just leave it. Don't click again. It should be okay. So that's good. If it's strong enough to hold a wagon full of now this is the next man though. It says that it's not a, it's not good because sometimes it can crack and the animal can fall in. You're not permitted to have little poles or metal objects sticking out of your house into Rishus Rabin. Oh, so this I need to show you. First of all, this is a picture a favorite. I, I take credit for this one. A guy on a skateboard learning Tyra. Based on this guy, um, Yoshi did this. This is the next one. Slide 22. Here we go. You got to click and it goes. Oh. That's if you have a ziz sticking out, a metal beam sticking out in the middle of Meisharim or Shusram. It could really hurt somebody bad. So now let's go to chart. I believe it's, yeah, chart 25. So you see how the house is stuck on, on the sidewalk. It's, it's butting up onto the sidewalk and there's a beam sticking out of it. Now, if he wants, now we click the button and the house is going to go inside you can move the house away you do this oh 
So now the house is moved back. The front yard of the house is his, he owns it, and therefore his beam could stick forward. Now what happens is that people start using that as the Rosh Hashanah, that whole area, the whole green. The green is really his, but now people are going to be using it. If he purchased a house that has existing beams sticking out of it, the is, you get to use it as is, you don't have to change anything. You bought it with, a, with an existing, it's grandfathered in, this ziz was sticking out for a hundred years, you get to keep it. Like we saw in the, in the video, I don't know if we have to show it again, that is more video uh, chart 20, that the animal goes by there, and the, that means it's already playing. You have to click? No. 20. Uh-uh. Yeah, that one. So the point of the Gemara, I'll just explain, and you can watch it while I'm explaining, that the, the sometimes when heavy objects go over it, you know, you have tr- tractive trailers that go over this, they weaken up the, the lid, and then eventually it's going to cause damage when another animal goes on top of it or, some, or a human being, they can fall in and hurt themselves. Next, the Gemara tells us two stories, very similar stories. One with Reb and one with Reb Ami. Reb Ami had uh, a beam sticking out into his Mavui. A Mavui is, let's see, we have in chart 23, a Mavui. It's where the, the front courtyards of all these houses, they dump into a, like a private street called a Mavui. And he had a, a beam sticking out, char 23. And a beam sticking out into the Mavu. Hmm? Not working? Mark, you don't see 23? Oh, you're not on. Okay. Oh. And this other guy had, I see it. He had a, a beam sticking out of Rosh Hashanah. Rabbi had Rosh Hashanah, and he has Rosh Hashanah. And the people of Rosh Hashanah say, what are you doing? Why do you have a, a beam sticking out into our Rosh Hashanah? So they came to Rabbi. So the Rabbi, you got to chop it down. Why could you talk? What are you telling me to do this? You yourself have a, a beam sticking out into the Mavi. So he says, the Mavi Mavi. Mine isn't a Mavui. What's the connection? I know everybody in the Mavui and they all moichel me. But you, on the other hand, you have a beam sticking out to Rosh Hashanah. You must get rid of it. Why? Because thousands of people go by every day. You know that you got mechilo from every single person. Says Gemara, a similar story. Who's Rabbi Yanei Rabbo Isai? To remember, Rabbi Yanei was Rabbi Yoichanon's Rebbe. Rabbi Yoichanon, the Galat Dor. It's his Rebbe. He had a tree Going into Rosh Hashanah, let's, uh, sorry, not this one. Let's get chart number 26 ready. Not yet. The people in Rosh Hashanah said, what are you doing? Why do you, why do you have a, a tree in Rosh Hashanah? They went to, to Rosh Go away, come back tomorrow. Belelio, so at night, Shoda Rabbiane sent Kaitzila Udidei. So that we have picture in uh, slide number 26. Oh. So show the slide first, yeah. So he sent this guy to knock down the tree that's growing into the Jerusalem realm. Omelay, Hamar, Nami Islay. I don't understand. Why should I cut down? Oh. So, sorry, the Mokhar also came, so the guy showed up, and Rabbiani says, Omalei, look good, chop down the tree. Omalei, Omar Nami is lay, but you also have a tree sticking over Rosh Hashanah, Omalei, Zil Chazi, go check it out. E kids did the kuts did up. If mine is chopped down, chop down yours. E loy kids did the, if mine is not chopped down, loy talk it's out, then you're right, you don't have to. The turning of the Dab of Samach Ahmed Bey is sponsored by Yisrael Sheriff, Construction Management, Supervision, and the Life Share Community, protecting families before today, before tomorrow's unexpected loss.
And by Kinovation Zelda, see in honor of my uncle Rebbe Choram Pressman and Fischl, and as the schools were keeping simple with Feigo, and Rivko Yehudis Basiafoch Hayo. Says Gemara. Mi Kora my Sava or Lusif my Sava. Why did Rabbi Yanai decide to cut down the tree at night? Says Gemara, Mi Kora Sava Nichlu Levnei Rishus Ravni Asif It's too late. Rabbi Yanai understood the reason why nobody told him anything about it because people loved the shade in the Rishus Ravni. Even the Chazak come after. But when he saw that people don't like the shade that much, they even go to the Besdin to force people to chop down their trees. He realized the reason why they're not telling him anything is because he's Rubiana. Who's going to start with Rubiana? Nobody wants to go to the Galadar and say, hey, Galadar, your tree is bothering me. So Melo, that's why he cut it down. So he sent somebody to cut it. So the Gemara of Elay why did he have to cut it at night? Go cut your tree. And don't worry, tomorrow I'm going to cut my mother and cut the deed. Because of the famous Rishlakesh, the Omar, it's Koshishu It says in the Apostle that you should remove the cash, the straw from yourself, and then remove the straw from other people. First, take care of your problems. Before you tell other people what to do, take care of your own problems. The Bashantov says that when you notice some, a flaw in your friend, it's very interesting. When you notice a flaw in your friend, that means that you have that flaw. But how did you notice the flaw in somebody else? Because you have that flaw. If you didn't have that flaw, you wouldn't notice it in your friend. That's what the Bashanta says. You have to do your own avoid on yourself before you tell your friends what to do. The Ram Shif, he went, he heard a speech from the Chsam Seifer, his Rebbe, the Chsam Seifer. He came back. And he stopped giving speeches and Musr to his kihila. He was the rub of the kihila. He wouldn't give them it. So they said, what's going on? He said, I heard from my Rebbe that first take care of your own flaws before you give Musr to other people. So they went to, to complain to the Chassam Sayyid. They said, our rub in the, the, the city is not, not giving us the, the speeches that we're used to. So Chassam Sayyid called him in. He said, Rebbe, you told, me, you told us not to. He said, no. You shouldn't give people Musr, but as a rub, the kihila wants to hear your musr. They want to hear it. Memela, I'm going to take a head from there to give the ilam musr, even though I have the same flaws. The mosh, like the other day when I was telling people about the, you should make an ama al ama, and at the end, I don't think we, we, we have it in our house, unfortunately. Maybe we do. I'll come there and it's going to be mamish in front of my face, but. Uh, just to remind the other what we're talking about, this was chart number 25. So chart number 25, that the, the beam is sticking over the Jerusalem. And if you want, you can pull back your entire house if it's so important to you. Yeah, if you click upwards, it goes back to the Jerusalem. And then if you click down, it goes back. No, that was, you're clicking the wrong way. No. <laughs> you think it's posh at these buttons that I do? Oh, so if that's the case, you're on the Rishus Rabbin and the beam sticking over Rishus Rabbin, so push back your whole entire house. They even have companies that come lift up your house and move it to another area. Pick up your house, move it backwards if, that, if it's so important to you, this chash of a beam that you have. Oh, just like that. Ibailu, Khanas Valaihaiti, Mao Shiazaviaiti. He hired a company, he moved the house back. But he didn't put a beam there. Could he later on put a beam there? Rebbeich Noma, Konas Moitzi, Rishlakosh, Noma, Konas Eni Moitzi, Machlagis Rebbeich and Rishlakosh. Oh, the reaction of Rebbeich Noma about the Khalifa as we Let me explain to you what's going on here. Lahaiti Kula Amalei Bnei Yadim Moitzi. If you push your house back, certainly it's your it's your yard, your front yard. That green area is yours. You can put the beam over there. That's not a problem. Keep leaky. The whole shayla over here is What if the guy decides Mark, show that slide 25 one more time What if the guy decides Yes, I hired the company to do this Now, now Mark, go back Can I push the house back to the sidewalk? So now the Gemara says No, here's the reverse Good why? Why can't I return the house to leave it over there for a second, Mark? 
Mishum the Rabbi Huda Dama Rabbi Huda Metzah Shechzik by Rabbi Moshe Kalgaloi. So I'm sorry, Mark, push it back to where it was before. That whole green area, people started using it. People were, were, were putting the strollers there, the bikes, the kids. It became part of the Jerusalem Rabbim. Since Rabbi Yochanan became part of the Jerusalem Rabbim, we have Allah that if people take, even if it's your property, they, they, they use it as, I always use Munsi as an example. They, they go through your backyard and they go over and over the whole year. And, and they make a chazar, they, they coin it. You can't tell them not to do it. The Shlokish Omar Mavzir. The Shlokish says, no, yes, you're right that the, the, the name of Jerusalem Rabbim are using it. That's because if they create their, a new a new pathway like in Mansi, you can't take it away from them. But over here, Rabbi said, check this out. All the the the, the brown the, the, that whole Rosh Hashanah area, they have plenty of room to maneuver, so I can move my house back to where it was before. Oh, just like that, and people still, even if I move my house right back to where it was before, like Mark just did. I have a tremendous amount of room on the reserve. Rabbi I have to give, again, a tremendous a curse, I tell you, to remark, because today I have to give three shiurim, because California doesn't match up to our Yisrael. We need to get the English here out before Shabbos, so the people in our Yisrael, it's going to be, it's already Shabbos, right? It's already way into Shabbos in our Yisrael. So by the time it's once Shabbos in LA, it's, it's too late already. So we have to do three shiurim today, and Mark is masking. To sit there, not only said today is a, it's an annoying day because he has to do all the, the, the charts, he has to click all the buttons because I don't have internet. Even though the internet guy was here today, it didn't work at that day. So in English, it's beautiful, it's so easy to explain. I didn't know how to explain it in Hebrew. There's something called grandfathered in. I'm grandfathered in with this beam sticking out of my house. Go jump in the lake. I don't care if people hit their head and every day there's stories. I don't care. This is how my house is. I'm not moving. What if my house fell down? Can I rebuild my house with the beam sticking out? Yes, it's grandfather in it. You rebuild it the way it was. Mace but I have a similar case, and you can it's you know we don't use grandfather in anymore. And this brings us the beautiful sugya of Zechel Khurba. That it says you're not allowed to use lime in your house. You're not allowed to make special, beautiful drawings on the walls of your house. And the paichim, you're not allowed to paint your house. after the churban abayis. Loga chotzim suyadis. What if you bought something that was already with lime, already has pictures? I don't have to remove it. I bought it like that. Nafla. But here's our case. The whole house fell down in a chayzur bainoi. So then I can't put the beautiful pictures back. I can't paint my house. I can't put the lime. Why not? Why is it not like I was so good that when the house falls down, I can put the beam sticking out. So when my house falls down, I can paint it the way it was before the base of was Nechra. It says, Surah Shani, because Khurban Abai, Zechel Khurban is an Isser. You can't, you, not, you can't do, you can't create an Isser. There's no grandfather in when it comes to Isser. You can leave it, but you can't build it. But when it comes to Chazaka of a beam sticking out and knocking people in the head, that's not an Isser, that's a Chazaka, that's okay. So now we're going to be talking a little bit about Churban Abayis. You should not use lime in your house. And if you add a little bit of sand or teven or straw, mutter, why is it mutter if you add all these materials? Because now it's not the beautiful white lime. It's a little, it's a little dirty in color. And memela, that itself is the Zeich L'Churban. If you don't no. If you add the stuff, you're right, it's a different color, but it actually improves the lime. It's called traxid, and that itself should make it osir v'osir. Teven, but just straw, mutter. Torabon. Kishacharev v'abayis b'shniel. The second time the bayis was nechav b'churben abayis shen. Rabu prushum yisrael, be yisrael, shalei lechol basav v'shalei lishnei siyayim. People stop eating meat and wine. Nid pa'alei mi Rishua. Rishua said, don't be too, too much of tzadikim. Not good. Why? Amalem bonayim. What's the reason? Let's hear the reason. What we're going to eat meat where there's no more carbonus anymore. We used to bring meat onto the mizbeach. We can't do it. What we're going to drink wine. We use this wine to pour on the mizbeach. So he's saying your reasoning is flawed. Then you can't eat bread anymore because there was bread in the base of by the menachas. Lechem 
Menachas is regular uh, carbonus. I'm just throwing in the Chabafanim. I don't see anybody talking about it. Yeah. If you have a pear rice, are you allowed to eat fruit? Pear is no yichal. Shepar batal bikurim. I'm sorry. If you have a pear rice, you could eat. You could eat other fruit. Pear is no yichal. Shepar batal bikurim. You can't eat fruit. You know why? Because this bikurim. So let's go. Sorry. Again, I pushed the wrong button here. Let's go just to the Shiva Saminim chart, which is chart 27. I like this chart, I like to show it all the time because not only does it have the Shiva Saminim, but also it shows you that it says the word Eretz twice. And that shows the importance of brachas. So the first bracha you ever make, if you have a bunch of foods on your table, you have grapes and, 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 and everything else, and pomegranates, you should make a bracha on, on bread first because it's first in the possible. But the Chiddush is, it goes, but whatever is closest to the word Eretz. So since it says Eretz twice in the Pasuk, Zayis is number one, is the first one of the second Eretz. So it comes before Sa'ira, which is barley, and it comes before Geffen. And you go through this list, Dvash, which is dates, is two on the second Eretz, comes before three of the first list. So Dvash on the bottom, which is dates, you make a bracha on before Geffen, which is grapes, which is third in the list from the top. Akaponim, when you have the, the Shiva Saminim, you bring the Bikurim, the first fruit that come out, you bring it to the base of We don't have it. So according to your logic, says Rabbi Yoshia, Rabbi Yeshua, you're not, allowed to, you're not allowed to eat any fruit. So they, so they told him, no, you're right, those fruit we won't eat. Evsham prepares the We could eat other fruit. We won't, we'll have apples, oranges. She so says, okay, but my Lanishta, so don't drink water. Shukva bottle, Nisukhamayim, we pour water on the Mizbeach, on Sukkis, the seven days of Sukkis, that Kushbahu should give us a bracha with rain. So according to you, your logic, you shouldn't be able to drink any water, Shasku. You're quiet. Checkmate. Omerlehen, Bonai, Boyu, Boymelachem. Let me explain to you. You cannot ignore the fact that we have to be Ba'abelus on the Churban Abayis. Shikra Nigzer Xera because the Beis Amidosh was already destroyed. But too much Abayis we cannot do. Shein Goizim Xera Latzibur because we cannot make Xera on the community. Elam Kain Roy Tzibur Yecholim Lamibah. The Rabbanon cannot make Xera Muktza whatever it is. If, the, if we know the Klai Yisrael is not going to be able to withstand it. The Chsiv, you are cursed with a curse. And you stole from me the entire nation. Kulai means, Kulai has to be at least 51% able to withstand. You could use lime in your tire house, but you have to leave a little bit over to remember the Churban Abayis. The Kama, Omer Rav Yosef, Amo Al Amo, two feet by two feet, so every house should have two foot by two foot area that's not painted, and that lime that's not halacha, le ma'isa, Omer Rav Chizduk, and Negeda Pesach should be across from the door, most say it's across, some say it's from the side of the door. There's a beautiful Shiloh in Ramosha Feinstein, what about somebody that rents out an apartment? Or like this beautiful house in Oxnard, which is an Airbnb from a firm person, is he mechuyev to leave an amal ama for those who rent it? I actually don't see an amal ama here. Got to talk to the guy. But first, I'll fix mine and then I'll call him up afterward. Um, so Ramosh is of the opinion that a guy that does only Airbnb, he doesn't, he's not mechuyev to do it. There's a shmachlaik as though. What if the guy that rents it is a from guy? Is he mechuyev to do his own amalam in the house? So one thing is clear that if the owner forces you to redo it and, and fix it, then you're not mechuyev to. But if he's also religious and he mekayim na alacha, so there's mechuyev is whether a renter has to do it. Says the Gemara, Omer Rav Chizik in Negedah Pesach. Oh, the Moshe told me, the Moshe from Lakewood said that this is the same Rav Yosef, the same Rav Chizik, that we had the same sugya that we had before when it comes to a ger, how much you have to do in order to acquire a ger's rishos, yishkoyach remoyesha. Before the shear is a lot better, or not a lot better, it's just, I could use it during shear. After shear, I can't use it anymore. 
Also, Adam called Sarchi Suudo, Umashari Bibdavamur. Says the Gemara that when you, this is a Chiddush Gada, when you eat a meal, you also have to remember the Beis Hamikdash by not eating everything, by leaving something over. On a woman, when she gets dressed with jewelry, she should leave one thing over. What is this exactly? Omar Rav Bas Tzido. The side, they used to shave the sides of the head. They thought it was nice. So they should let it grow. All the guy would see, oh, these people are strange. They're growing their hair over here. Everybody was shaved over here. Yes, so a beautiful Maisa from all for the boss, he wanted to, Rabbi Yaakov Yosef Herman wanted to show the Olam that he's leaving something over by, I think it was a wedding, but not serving everything. So you can say, oh, I'm not going to serve dessert, and Memela, the Olam will chap, that's Zeich Lechurba. He did it different. He paid for the dessert in full, and then he didn't serve it. So I, I had this little uh, argument with my Chavrusa. I thought it was a good idea. He thought it was a terrible idea. So I'll just throw it out there. And the island could decide. It's a terrible, good idea. I was thinking about this acrylic box, like this size, with maybe like a little, you know, an inch rim around it. Inside it would say MDY. And around it would say Zeich Lechorban. And you put like a, some dish in there. You put a hummus, you put peanut butter, I don't know what. You put it in there. In, in the center of the table. And that is the Zeichel Achor, when we say, the, not that we're not bringing the food, because you don't bring the food, okay, Shkoyer, you didn't bring food. I, I had steaks, but uh, I left it in the fridge. No, no, no. I'm putting the steak out right here on this plate, and we're not eating it at this meal. That's a Zeichel Achor, Moshe Tzarech. He said, no, that's too much. The people are going to get uh, upset that they can't eat it. Whatever. Just throwing it out there. I thought it would be a nice um, um, merch. MDY Zeichel Churban Suda merch. Now, what's interesting, this halacha doesn't apply in Shabbos and Yontif. So, when exactly are you going to use it? Uh, when, when your wife makes a delicious uh, dinner, a birthday dinner, then, uh, then you can use it. Okay. So, Zog de Gemara. Omar Rav, Bazin. Shinemar. Oh, oh, oh. So over here, since I'm sitting by myself, the Olam has to sing the song. Okay, we're going to start now. On your mark, get ready, get set. I'm, I'm going to drop out, and you're going to continue. Ah, you're doing this one? שנאמר, אם יש כוחי חירושלים, תשכח ימיני, חבר'ה, אני עוצר כאן, תשאירו. אם יש כוחי חירושלים, יפה מאוד, אחלה, אחלה. איתי, תשכח, תשכח ימיני, תדבע. Kobe did a beautiful job of editing. I said in the Hebrew shir, we should sing. So he threw in this music. It came out very, very nice. So I think it saves Yosef and Ariel. They don't have to go through that hole. And I don't have to traumatize the Olam with my singing in the, in the English. So. My tongue. Tidbak is a lotion of will get stuck, will will glue itself to my my chiki. My al roy simchosi. Al roish, al roy simchosi. What's that? Al roy simchosi. 
So it's, it's beautiful. Now I'm chapping more and more the pshat. Omar Rav Yitzchok, the Eifer Miklash of Roish Chasanim. What's Al Roish Simchasi? The Roish, the epitome of my Simcha. Think about it. The happiest day of a man's life should be his wedding day. What other day? The day your child is born. But the day you get married, the day you buy a brand new suit and tie and shoes, and you're spending $100,000 today in America, who, who knows what people are spending on a chasana? $20,000, $30,000, $100,000. 100 is sometimes too little. Some people are spending a half a million, a million. Al Roish, on the, on the spitz, on the epitome of the simcha, that's when we put ashes on your head. But where? Where do we put the ashes? Where do you put it? Bemokin tefillin on the spot of the tefillin. Shenemer losum laaveli tzion losis lohem peer. We know peer. Peer is tefillin. Peer cho chavoy sholecho. Tacha sefer. Instead of the ashes, you should put a pair of tefillin. So we put the ashes by the tefillin. So if you think about it, it's beautiful. By the, the Rosh Simchasi, the, the top, top of the Simcha, where do we put it? On top of your body, the most important part of your body, which is the head. The most important part of your head is where you put your tefillin. When everything is it's going unbelievable, it's the top, it's the best. But no, just pause for a minute and remember the Beis HaMikdash. Remember that we miss the Beis HaMikdash. But it's not, it's not pshat that we sit and we, like, like Rabbi Shua said, that we don't eat the meat and we don't drink the wine and we're complete in our velos. No, no, no. We're going to be besimcha. But at the same time, we have to remember. Don't ever forget. And it's many times in life like that. It's, it's the balance. It's the balance. It's not 100% of keros, shichros, and we bring the DJ in. Today's chasanas. This is DJ and the disco lights and we're going with sugar. No. <laughs> 98, 95%. But there's that one, one thing. J- just remember. Remember the Beis HaMikdash. Zog the Gemara. B'chol ha-mis'abla Yerushalayim. And when you do this Avelos for Yerushalayim, it's for your good. Zoy chavaroi b'simcha. So at the end of the day, you'll see its glory, its simcha. Shenemar simcha is Yerushalayim. V'gilu. Says that with this xero that you forget about a mace. After a year, you forget about a mace, more or less. The fact that Klai Yisrael's Mesabel on the Bishamigdosh is telling the Rabbi Shalom it's still alive, it's still going to be here. It says Rameir Shapiro. And we have to I have to be more makbid on this at Siyumim to mention him and mention him because of that Karas Hatoy when he brought Klai Yisrael. It says Ramey Shapiro that when a person is misabel, it shows HaKosh Baruch Hu how much we care and how much we want and desire that we say That's the Sabos. We show and when Hashem sees it then Beis Hashem will replace it. Tanya Rishmo. Says they're right. They should you should not be able to eat wine, eat meat and drink wine. It's because of us that we won't be able to withstand it, and we don't want people to be over our But once these Rishoyim Arurim, the Romans, the came. And the terrible Xeris, you Xeris, a little Xeris, Royce Vikoshois. Umvateles me menu, Toyro Mitzvois. They take away from us Toyro Mitzvois. Be Menachas, his son, only Connors, the Shavu Aben, and doesn't allow us to do a bris for our sons. And a pidion a ben for our sons. Vamile Yeshua Ben, pidion a ben. So I gotta stop and I gotta say my favorite story, one of my favorites. The Russian mother. Who they didn't allow her to do a, to perform a bris meal on her son. After a year, she found a moil, 
and she gave her son to the mile, and the mile did a bris. And after the bris, the mile takes the baby and gives it to the mother. And the mother takes the baby, kisses the baby, and falls on the floor. Faints. She wakes up, faints again. What happened? This woman, Tzadikas, she made a net there. She said that she's not going to kiss her kid until he has a bris. So the day of the bris was the first time she was able to kiss her son. So she fainted. Oh, so over the years we had the Romans, we had different, different, different nationalities that try to stop the bris, the Russians in Machshimam, Stalin, the Hulu, the, the Romans, they all try to stop. But Hashem says, look, we're going to make two bris on one day, two pinyon bends on one day. Ah. Says the Gemara, maybe we shouldn't get married. And maybe we shouldn't have children. Because of these Xeris. It will come out that Klai Yisrael will disappear on their own. If they can't get married, there won't be a Klai Yisrael. We have to, it's a Pella. How do you understand? Because they made Xeris, so that's why we shouldn't exist. Says Taisvis, there's a chiv de raisa to get married and prove a and have children. How can we be like that? Says Taisvis, yeah, after you have a son and a daughter, then you shouldn't have any more. It doesn't really fit into the Lashon so well. It says, Nigzar Shalei Lisa, you shouldn't even marry. Benim Tzazar Shalei Lisa, you shouldn't even marry. Elan Achla Em Lisa, Mutov, Shu Shoygigin, Baal Yun Ezidin. It's better that a Klaisro should be Shoygigin, not amazing. If we're going to make a Xera and they don't. And they're not Makayim the Xerah, then they'll be over on a, on a, on a Derabonon, which is worse than a Deraisa. You, you have to be Makayim the Derabonons. And you'll be amazed and not be Makayim the Derabonon. And with that, Rabbi said before, before we say this Hadra, Hadra, for me it's very emotional. It's Cheska Sabat. This guy, I forgot his name. He's famous because he made a song with his son who was then not religious. And it went viral. He was very, very supportive of his son who wasn't religious and he made a song and he sang with him and this. And today, Baruch Hashem, his son is religious. He got married just recently. He got married, has a kid. And he came over to me in Shul. Oh yeah, I forgot his name. Uh, like Grumboim, like came over to me. He said, listen, do me a favor. Uh, he's, he's a big part of the shir. He's been with us for a long time. He said, make sure you do it well. Make sure I have such trauma from yeshiva. This is a person in the 60s. I have trauma from yeshiva. Make, make sure it's okay. Ay, ay, ay. So, I don't see the trauma. Bemis, I don't see it. And I really hope that the Elam enjoyed it as much as I did. 60 daf into Baba Basra and it's Kishmak as ever. So Bezer Hashem, the rest of Baba Basra is going to be just as Kishmak. And Hadron Allah Cheska Sabatin. Hadron Allah Cheska Sabatin. Hadron Allah Cheska Sabatin. Have a wonderful day. I have no idea why I'm crying. Have a wonderful day.